Hi friends. friends and welcome to Wives vs. World where we have fun talking about queer stuff and life as a trans cis lesbian couple. I am the illustrative Jackie and I am Hugh Grant in 1980 or something. And yeah. Oh, because of the hair. Sure. Or because your career has taken a turn in the last couple of years. Oh god. <laughs> oh, that, his is a good turn, I think. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. Listen. Ooh. I, I'll take it. Speaking of careers and taking a turn, we alluded to a shift in my career last time and uh, I am here before you to tell you, those of you who are on Instagram will already know, but I am coming out as a tattoo apprentice. So I've left corporate, I'm out of all that for now. I found a wonderful studio called Fall of Man in Fredericksburg in Denmark and it's so amazing, like I'm scared shitless, I am so nervous, I don't think I'm good enough but I really want this. I'm just, I'm just so excited. I am too! And I have a lot of questions for you. Questions? Yes, questions. Okay. So did you always dream of uh, becoming a tattoo artist? Not really, no. Um, I always wanted to do something like artsy and tattooing has been something that's only been on my mind for like a year or so uh, because I just thought that's like that's a whole nother league, you know, that's so permanent, that's like, you know, really committing, it's a lot of hours, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of, you know, rigorous studying and techniques and doing things over and over. Uh, so I, I, I never really saw myself in that. Uh, mostly because I think I saw art as like, you know, a hobby or like, you know, an outlet. But to think of it in career terms, since Corbin has ground me down a couple of times, I actually think it's like, it's really exciting because it takes it from being like something that is, and I don't mean this in any bad way, it goes from being very academic, very research heavy, very method heavy. Intangible. Uh, and intangible and takes it into like a craft. You know, there are best practices, there's stuff that you can do, but like as some place between craft and art, it's also like you learn some things and then you, you know, you take it somewhere yourself. Mm. I see it now, but I didn't always want to. So if you didn't always want to, then how did you fall into tattooing? How did you go from corporate to tattooing? It's a bit of a long story. Back when I was working for and I was first experiencing like heavy burnout. I uh, I started getting tattooed. I got this one here and I've shown you that one before from like this wonderful artist. Like they're just so amazing and they've done all the other tattoos that I have on my body except for one. Uh, exactly that one too. This one here as well and then this one here too. So and we got to talking and when, if, when, when I needed my next tattoo done I went to them of course. In between those sessions we followed each other, we talked a bit, we commented. They were just so kind because they were opening their own studio and when I was writing hey I'm just totally burned out what should I do just um, asking for a friend you know. They reached out and was like actually it's not to be pushy but have you considered tattooing and you know at first i was like oh i'm very flattered but i'm not good enough to do any of that i'm just an idiot so uh, thank you that, uh, that would be nice but like i don't think that's for me i'm you know i'm a klutz and then it just spiraled from there and then when i went into my second bout of like stress angst and depression <laughs> it just all made sense yeah i started two weeks ago <laughs> And also, like, since, since when we talked about your day job last time, mm. you seem pretty happy to be in corporate. Content, at least. Content, yeah. So what, what happened? What happened? Um, it just got to be too much. Um, I really like, like, I really like being a project manager. I think it's a lot of fun. I think there are a lot of challenges. And I do love making plans and making schedules and, uh, you know, all that stuff. But I just found myself in a situation where I didn't really believe in why I was doing what I was doing. I couldn't really see the the why uh, for, for me pouring all these hours into what I did. Um, and that just made me so... It, it delusioned me completely. I mean, I just... I couldn't find myself in what I spent the majority of my time on. You also fell into a lot of unlucky holes. Like, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. A lot of things just happened that weren't optimal, especially mm. like since 2020, and a lot of like uh, yeah. restlessness and issues with the corporate organizations, and mm. like a, a lot of stuff that just led to your jobs feeling 
they suck my soul yeah, out of exactly. my butt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you came home every day and you, you were not mentally there. No. You were tired, you were exhausted all the time. You didn't have the mental energy to do anything besides the job that you hated. <laughs> mm. And I think it took you a really, really long time to realize this was happening to you. Yeah. Um, and because I had been through all of that not uh, many years before, I, 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 I just saw it. I've seen mm. it in you for a long time and I've kept telling you, yeah. I think you should quit this job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't I don't even think the newest one was the worst. No, uh, it was the one before. It, it was actually it was actually a really good note to yeah. end on. Because like if, if I go through my history, like my professional history, I graduated in 2017 and the first two jobs I had were wonderful and then things started going you know, wrong just before the, the pandemic. I just never really found my place and when I thought I did, I was really you know, stabbed in the back by my manager and that just destroyed all trust I had. So the last place I was, people were so nice, uh, the atmosphere was really cool, I really actually liked the company and could actually have seen myself continue if circumstances had been a bit different, but they aren't. And I'm, I'm gonna have to try something new. Uh, to be real with you guys, I lost two grandparents in 2021, like within weeks of each other. And they were both in a really bad place when they died and I just, everything just sort of became clearer to me that like, why am I doing this thing that I don't like, that I don't know why I'm doing for potentially ever until I, you know, can retire and then boom. What's the point? Also, the your boss at that point didn't give you time to grieve. She didn't no. let you. She, she was really like mean about the whole thing, and also like you weren't really able to be there for any of your grandparents. No, because of your job. <laughs> exactly. I, I really that, wanted to like in yeah. the weeks up to because it was pretty obvious. I just didn't have time because my boss had me working, and then when they died, she was like, "Oh well, it's just grandparents, you know." Yeah, exactly. Like she just told you to get over it and get back to work, yeah. basically. Um, and I think you never really recovered from that because no. you had a really long period of like sorrow you needed to process after that and that was just really difficult it's a while ago now but yeah. still I don't I don't think that you ever really got over that part and it never really left you it just it, it has just been going downhill since <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> honestly but you are a creative soul <laughs> What a pivot! Uh, <laughs> you, you, you are a creative soul and you have seen uh, what uh, what can be achieved if you follow your dreams. <laughs> and, and I think, because I'm also, I'm a worry word. I want to be secure in my life. I want to I wanna know that we always have money enough for, you know, fixing the car or mm. if the cats have to, uh, you know, I don't know, have surgery or something yeah. or, you know, unforeseen stuff. It is a really scary financial situation. Mm. And it's not <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen we're kind no. of just like hoping for the best that it will like at some point start to make sense make sense for me i i had a lot of fears about that when i graduated and didn't find a proper job and have haven't really been <laughs> making money but i have kind of put that fear behind me because i just I have been so far down into the soup of depression for so many years. You really and have. I just cannot, like, fun. I don't care anymore. I don't care because I need to want to live the life that I'm living right now. Mm. Or otherwise, it just, I don't, it doesn't make sense. No. If I have to do something I hate for the next 40 years, I just, listen, I don't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. At least for the next couple of years, I'm going to be okay doing something I'm not crazy about or maybe actually hate part-time as long as I get to live my life and I know this is a massive luxury especially like of a lot of our audience is from the US mm. where we see you having to work maybe two maybe three jobs and you Just don't have pay a, your you don't have rent. a safety net yeah, exactly. at all which we do which is very nice which yeah. gives us this opportunity to yeah. try and start out see what happens and then make other choices. So I, I recognize the privilege, but it's still really fucking scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't work out, we'll we'll do something else. We'll think of something and we will change our circumstances to make it mm. all <laughs> make sense. And I think that's okay for now. Like also in the last few weeks, mm -hmm. I've seen my wife come back to life. <laughs> I've seen I, you are more present you're more, you're smiling you seem happy again you have ideas you have drive you you actually you actually enjoy <laughs> going to work yeah. <laughs> everything a stung hates in a woman <laughs> <laughs>
Anyway, I just I'm I've been really happy about that, and I, mm. I I am so convinced that this is the right decision. So I am I'm personally very excited about mm. this new <laughs> very invested situation. Yeah, very invested. And I also want to ask you what are some of your dreams with this? What what excites you about, and what are things you like? What are your visions? I really want to make cute tattoos for people of all sorts. My personal philosophy with the tattoo isn't that it's it has to be the most important thing and you have to choose the thing that you and you're gonna like it for the rest of your life because if that's how you want to go about it you're never gonna find something because I don't think you can find something pinpointed at one point in your life and be like I'm gonna be crazy about this for the rest of my life this is gonna mean the same thing to me all my life uh, so my idea is it's temporary it's fleeting just like life is uh, so I want to make stuff that you know makes people happy mm. or make them laugh or you know it's decorations yeah exciting decorations exactly. <laughs> more than they are the most meaningful thing mm. ever <laughs> yeah i want to do more prints i want to do more commissions yes. i want to do stickers yes. I'm, I'm thinking of buying a printer so i can make my own sticker sheets and stuff like that and and cut out the middleman there mm. yeah i, I want to do tattooing next to doing other art stuff mm. Uh, I think down the road, I would really love to work in either something like product design or animation or concept art or stuff like that. And I think that would be really amazing and really cool. I also, I've always wanted to do a comic. So I have lots of dreams. Only some of them are realistic, but that's fine. <laughs> Unattainable dreams are the best kind. That's true. Uh, crisis core, if you know, you know. This is not me trying to sell you stuff, but... Me? Go oh. Gaga. <laughs> Miko Gaga Monday! Stop. I did not see that coming! <laughs> this is not me trying to sell you stuff or like, uh, you know, going out with the, with the small, like, hey, give me money. But like, in the coming couple of months, uh, if you want some artwork, if you want anything, the DMs are open, you can always message me, call me, do what, uh, don't call me. Uh, you can always message me, write You're, to like, me. Yeah, but not. Um, reach out, DM, write. Uh, I would love to, you know, do that. I would love to give you a good price. Um, and, and, you know, just sort of practice and get into it because this is all very new to me. It's all very exciting. If you want to buy something, you know, you can buy something. What you should say is, your commissions are now open. <laughs> you get the privilege of asking okay, 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 Jackie for a commission. Blah, 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 blah. I get the privilege of maybe taking your commissions if you if you ever feel that way. <laughs> That's how you market, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and you also have the privilege of buying my book. <laughs> and if you're ever in Fredericksburg, if you're ever thinking of having, you know, a tattoo done by yours truly, trans artist, you know, starting out her own business, you know, girl fancying. I would love to. It's not gonna be good at the beginning. That's the contract we make here. It's gonna be subpar, but it's also gonna be cheap and you're gonna be helping me out. It's an artist's early work. Yes. You know, it's not it's not less good. It's just a different period of the art journey. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for always being there. Thank you for watching our dumb videos. Thank you for taking care of yourself and brushing your teeth. That's important. Also, remember to floss. Remember to floss. Uh, my recommendation this week, you can always see Lord of the Rings again. It's a very good movie. Um, and uh, yeah, find us all across the internet. We're there for you uh, and we're there for us. Um, and that's all I want to say. I'm almost crying because I was thinking about those things. <gasps> no, sorry, what were we talking about? Yes. yes. Goodbye? We hope you had fun, and if you did, you can subscribe for more. It's true. We try to upload once a week in these turbulent times. That's gonna be a bit topsy turvy, um, but we're always trying our best. And if you do, we're always trying. It's just always <laughs> not always happening. If you're looking for your favorite stupid couple, you can find us all across the internet. You can find all the links in the description. Uh, come say hi. We love it when you say hi. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. We hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> he's, he's sailing away, and yeah. Sam was like, oh, "Of course oh, you are, yeah. yeah." And I'm going with you. <laughs> Listen, okay. <laughs>